Welcome back. It's the news of, and we want to get our conversation started. We're looking at the peace pact, <sighs> coincidentally, that has been signed by a good number of candidates. And, uh, you know, it, before then, there was a story that uh, the presidential flag bearer of PDP uh, boycotted the pact, and uh, the ACPN, that's Dr. Obi Ezekusili, also boycotted, likewise, uh, uh, Showere of AAC. Uh, and uh, we have another person here in the studio, and I think it's for us to find out whether he also signed or he boycotted the Peace Pact. I'm referring to Dr. Chris David, the presidential candidate of Liberation Movement. You're welcome. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. Uh, you're too young to run. You're, you're, you're so young until, you know, vibrant. Oh, you look young. <laughs> I look young. That's, that's, that's well, you're right not 50, there. are you? I'm 44. You so, see, so you're young. Um, no, I'm a, not in that sense. Uh, not too young to run. I'm uh, right <laughs> to run. Yeah, yeah you are right to run. Okay, yes. let's get started. Did you sign? Uh, no, I can't sign such a document. Why is that? Well, I consider uh, that document as uh, a ceremony that is aimed at doing things right. Hmm. I think it's high time we began to pursue how we can do the right things, the right things in Nigeria. Now, November 29, I was in the first meeting where this, the issue of, of the 2015 was discussed, what they signed in 2015. And there were five broad areas which they considered then that could breach the peace of the 2015 elections. And uh, during the interactions, uh, as the national chairman of your party then, or what? Or what? No, I said 29th of this last month. Okay, you, which is just because 20, you mentioned 2015, that's what I was... No, 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 I'm saying that okay. the document that was presented to us okay. in that meeting was what they signed in 2015. 2015. And there were five broad areas which they considered then as these are the issues which will bring the peace of that election. And in that meeting, I made a submission that between 2015 and 2019, there are two other things that are very vital. One of them is vote buying. We have seen how vote buying has moved from retail vote buying to institutional vote buying. Hmm. And I did mention that vote buying should be included in that peace pack. The second thing that I mentioned was the issue of intimidation. That we have seen how the government in power are using the institution of the state to oppress other parties. And you cannot have peace where there is no equality where there is no justice. And I can also remember my national secretary in his own contribution said that, yes, we have these broad areas because the Peace Committee does not have legislative power, executive power, or judiciary powers. Hmm. So why not we come up with the offenses so that by the time we sign this document, we know that if you breach any one of these or, or any one of the issues that have been regarded in that document, then these are the punishments. Then the last thing that we agreed was that the draft document should be sent to us. So we read. Then, if there are comments, we made those comments before going to sign. So, as a president of this nation, you don't expect that I should sign a document that I have not gone through, I have not read. So, the question is that, did they send that document to some people and they didn't send to 
the other parties. So was that the reason why you didn't attend? Yes. Yeah. Now, you, you said something. You said in 2015, there were five broad areas they looked at, thinking that that was those were the major things that could obstruct the peace for the 2015 election and then. Uh, but this year, uh, what, uh, you would know better if it was quite different or not, but some of the key points they said or they, they raised in the peace agreement was to run issue-based campaigns at national, state and local government levels. Now in this, uh, what the presidential candidates are pledging to is to refrain, refrain from campaigns that will involve religious incitement, ethnic or tribal profiling, both by ourselves as the candidates and by all agents acting in our names. Now this is quite peculiar to this time because we've seen from, you know, from times past, let me, let's talk about the recent elections that took place, AKT Osho and so on and so forth. We've seen how, you know, we have been facing these challenges of ethnic violence or political violence. And you think it's not important that uh, this peace committee invited all candidates. And you, you think you needed to read the entire booklet before you realize that it's It's not a important. booklet. It's just the simple paper that you just read. What if, you, what if you attended and they gave you the simple paper to go through before signing? Why not send it to us? That was the agreement. They were supposed to email to us. Then we read and make our comments whether this actually depicts what we agreed or not. And that was not done. And you say we should come and sign document. And the thing is, we are just looking at it uh, because it's a Nigerian thing. This has been how our leaders have been signing documents. All the international treaties, conventions, we just sign. We don't know what is even inside those documents. And that's why we can't implement those things. So for us to be coming to the politics, political space, we must change the narrative. We must behave as professionals. And do you change the narrative by staying away from what this committee set up? Yes, exactly. Because if something does not meet standard, then you should not be part of it. Okay, Dr. Chris, let's, let's look at, uh, I'm, I'm trying to quote you, the team now, when you said that it is an attempt to achieve peace, but probably you fought the process. But let's stay on the content of this letter, I mean, of this document, uh, so to say. <coughs> uh, you will recall what played out in 2015. And in the build up to that election, we have quite, you know, uh, distressful report. Uh, you told me record that close to 1,000 people died due to post-election violence. By 2015, this document was signed and you saw the role the committee members played, you know, in toning down possible violence before the result was even announced. So, that's, we're looking at... That, is, looking that at, is not correct. Okay. What happened in 2015 is that you just had an individual who saw peace or who place the national interest above his personal ambition. That was what happened in 2015. There are factors. In 2015. And there are factors. And one of the questions I also asked on that 29th of November is that, having signed this document, if any of the candidates decides to breach the peace, what exactly can you do? And the answer was that this committee is just to appeal to the conscience of politicians. Now, why did I say we attempt to do things right rather than doing the right things? The question is, this peace document and the electoral act that the president refused to sign, which is more important, that electoral act actually will promote peace because in that electoral act talks about how elections should be free, fair, and credible. And there cannot be peace where the elections are not free and credible. In fact, what endangers um, <coughs> and their people to uh, violence is where they feel that there is injustice in any process or in any society. So to promote peace or create the atmosphere of peace in any society, then you should promote equality, fairness, justice. Now, we, instead of <coughs> focusing on the electoral act that has powers, legal backing. legal backing, 
we, we, we decide to leave that aside and sign ordinary paper. Because that is what it means. Now, people will say, Let's, when you get to the bridge, we know how to cross it. Now, I'm also sure that it's not too late for your party, for you to sign this peace uh, act. Uh, because we know that now that Paraventure, you have seen the content of the document. You've seen that it's to promote and foster peace. I've, I've not seen okay. the content of the document. You've it has not been sent to me. When you had the discussion, you saw the content. Like that was said. in 2015. And which was now, developed. But now, you, at least we have access to the document. We know what document maybe, Yeah, says. maybe because so, you are, you are no, a you're journalist. No, you're a candidate. You should have it. You're a candidate. <laughs> no, that, yeah, exactly. As a candidate, I should what? Have, have it. it. But was it sent to me or to my party? Now, the committee probably is watching you now. And uh, they are reaching out to everybody. You remember what happened when... Buhari, um, President Buhari signed and uh, uh, the former vice president didn't sign. They said that it's still open that you can look at this document before you sign. So, we, and if you can see what was displayed on our screen, they said no selling of vote, no buying of vote. So, it is believed that it is also entrenched. But that beyond document. that, beyond that, you have mentioned that there is an attempt to bring peace. What is the place of what is the place of uh, hate speech? What is the place of Ethnic incitement. We is a multi. Is an religion, heterogeneous religion. You know, it's an heterogeneous uh, uh, society. So, what is your take as a presidential candidate definitely, on these issues? Do, definitely, nobody will want to promote that. Are you sure? Yes, nobody will want to promote any sincere. You're sure of yourself? Yes, <laughs> I'm sure of myself. Better. And I also know of so many people. Better, not nobody. That they want the interest of this nation. They want these nations to turn out the way we all want it to be. And therefore, we should not promote all these uh, mundane uh, issues. But the thing is, let's get things right. Let's do the right things. In that meeting, it was agreed what meeting that... What now? 20, November 29? Yes. Okay. That this thing, this document, the revised or the updated document will be sent to us. The question is, did they send that document to the political parties? Now that's a big question and because you have said your political party or you didn't get a copy of that, uh, of that letter of, of the document. Now from all you've said so far, it looks like you are in agreement with what the letter said, even if you haven't read it. Now, if they've done the wrong thing, uh, wrong thing by not sending you the document, and you know that you agree, you are in, you know, in total agreement with what the, the document says, even though you haven't seen it, why don't you just try to do the right thing by going up to the committee and telling them, you did send this to me, I would like to have a copy and see if I'm in agreement, and then you sign it. Why, you know, because you're, it looks like you're playing tough, because you are wrong, you're trying to be wrong, and two wrongs don't make it right. So why don't you go in that route? Well, I'm not, I'm not playing tough. The issue is that I have not seen that document. And if it's made available to me, and I go through the, that document, I will sign. But as it is, I can't say I will sign a document that I've not gone through. But the point I'm also stressing is that this peace committee or peace accord is just a ceremony to make things right. We should do the right thing by signing the Electoral Act. So part of the right thing is we should legislate this committee. Is that what you're saying? Probably we should. We don't even need this committee in the first place. And let me ask the question, which developed nation signs peace accord to elections? It's because the fundamental values, the principles that promotes democracy are not in Nigeria. Now I can get your point. The, point, the, the bottom line is you prefer the Electoral Act amendment to be signed rather than this, this peace committee. So talking about it, uh, I don't want us to change the discussion, but talking about the relevance of the Electoral Act, because you saw what Atiku said, you saw what Obi said. They said that uh, beyond this thing, the president should sign this Electoral Act. And that is what I'm also and, saying. And, and you are also joining your own voice to that. But let's look at it. The president has mentioned some germane issues. If you look at the draft, one of the clause, clauses did say that uh, just declare and transmit to the coalition center. In other words, the word counting is not there. 
So is it not important that the president raise this issue and the fact that it is also very close to the election. So why don't we see the electoral ad beyond 2019 election, looking at the ECOWAS Treaty, where they said six months to the election, such document, I mean, you don't change the rules or you don't touch the rules. Now, you see, there is something that is called an obvious mistake. And there is something that is called an intentional mistake. The president has refused to sign this electoral act for three times and the last one was brought to you they knew that the six months deadline was there they didn't raise the issue until the last day that they feel that okay if we don't sign uh, the legislation will take action so you can see there is an intentional act as an accusation I'm saying, I'm following the reasoning. I'm not accusing everybody, but everybody can see what has been going on. Now, talk about the ECOWAS protocol. That is Article 2, number uh, 1. They quote six months. And there is a proviso that saying, provided the majority of the parties agreed. That's what that's... That provision is not mentioned. Yeah, it's, it's, it's saying. So they will quote that section, but they will not mention the, 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 remain, the, 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 the remaining uh, phrase. So what that means is that you can even change the law within 30 days, provided majority of the parties agreed. So that is not an excuse. Now, this peace committee is trying to get all candidates pledge their uh, peace accord with them and like you've rightly stated uh, you want peace your party wants peace a peaceful election come 2019 do you think your backing out you know is um, going to downplay the reason why this committee was set up in the first place now look at the people the caliber of people that make up the committee a former general we have a, 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 a reverend kuka and we have other elder statesmen in that committee some of them have been in, on the realms of affairs in Nigeria. They have led, you know, at some uh, instances in Nigeria. And don't you think that because of what or the peculiarity of the nation, you have said which other country does that? Nigeria is peculiar. We can't really compare ourselves with other nations. It's only developing nations that sign such documents. We are a developing nation. That's the sad, yeah. that's the sad and reality. How long, how long for the past 58 years we've been trapped in this cycle of endless failure, backwardness? And on that development. So are you saying that? Are we not supposed irrelevant? to promote the principles, the values that we transform this nation to a developed nation? That is what I said. We should do the right things, to not try to get things. Dr. Chris, doing the right thing, if you listen carefully to what she said, <coughs> this is someone who was the former head of state. See, Excuse not, me, I'm sir. I'm going somewhere. This was someone who is the former head of state. And you have the kind of um, Reverend Father Kuka, who, who probably is in the north and he knows what happened in 2011. These were things that lives have been wasted, core members have been killed, and as we speak, justice has not been served. And people are trying to take immediate measure. Because if you say we should think like a developed nation, that sounds like a long time ago. But the immediate measure, don't you think we can find a way of renew, if possible, completely annihilate bloodbath. Can I, should I ask you this question? Do you think signing that peace pact document will actually solve, stop violence in Nigeria? You can reduce it. But it can't stop it. But what can stop it is mm. when you create a level playing field, equality, promote equal civil rights, equal economic right, equal political right. That is what you see. So in elections, elections should be free, credible, transparent. And one of the things that will make elections to, to be free, transparent, is the, the extant laws that we have. And we've seen that from between 2015 and now, there are certain things that should be in place which are in that amendment act. 
So nobody, like I said, because I, I see myself as uh, somebody representing anybody that have good interests of this country, should be promoting violence. But the things that will promote peace should be done, not just mere or, or makeshift arrangements. Right, um, Chris, recall in 2015, before the elections, a lot of people within and outside the country, you know, said that um, Nigeria was going to divide, there'll be a lot of bloodshed uh, during the elections, a lot of negative things. Uh, unfortunately, that was when the IPOM read its ugly head, saying that uh, Nigeria would be divided, they wanted to be a republic on its own. And then the 2015 elections came and it's gone. And uh, will I say thankfully, to, to an extent, uh, the, the casualties were not as high as we expected, were not as high as uh, the United States or the United Kingdom thought it was going to be. There wasn't a division in Nigeria. And people could trace that to the fact that there was a peace committee set up at that time. Do you think, would you say, because of what we are facing, you mentioned something, religious diversity, uh, ethnic diversity, uh, cultural diversity, or political differences too. Do you think that this peace uh, committee set up in the last election had a role to play in downplaying the number of casualties or violence we heard or recorded in 2015? Well, in my view, the president then did not want violence. And do you think the president now wants violence? Well, I can't say that. He has signed the peace accord. He has signed the peace now, agreement. It's not he was present there. Mm. He has always said, I am going to ensure we have a free, fair, and credible election come 2019. So why do you think you do, why do you think he's not on the side of what the former president uh, did or said? Well, what I'm saying is that the signing of that peace document will not stop violence. That is the point I'm making. In 2015, we, we didn't have uh, so much violence because the president then saw the need to put national interest above his personal ambition. Dr. Chris, let me listen to you again. Now, you are talking about the impact, if I get you clearly, the, 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 the import of what the political gladiators stand in election. Mm -hmm. And now, if the former president took a bold step to accept the result, it speaks volume that the political gladiators, which you are part of them, play a key role, you understand, in stopping violence, if you agree with me. Now, if their supporters see them signing that, oh, I'm not going to, I'm going to speak out against provocative utterance, I'm going to stop anything that has to incite one ethnic against the other, don't you think that's a clear body language, not just body language now, even a written language to say that we are not for violence. Yeah, definitely. That depicts that, that uh, um, signing that document uh, said we are not for violence. But what I'm saying is that if an individual decides to breach, to go against what has been signed, what will be done. That's why I said, why don't you move for legislation? And you said, no, that we don't need this committee. This committee, I don't want to believe they are jobless. They have been able to come up with some, doc, some statements to say that, let's sign this thing. This is a sign. Your followers are watching. They are seeing you that, oh, you don't want violence-based uh, election. You want issue-based election. Don't you think it's a, it's, it's a right step in the right direction. I yeah. know we can't change your mind, but just have a rethink. No, we can. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, you are not, I'm not here for you to change my mind. And, and you're not here to change our minds. <laughs> no, what, what I'm trying to say, or what I'm, I've been saying, is that let's do the right things, not just getting things right. Let's do the right things. And I've asked the question, between the Electoral Act and this peace document, which one do you think will actually promote peace? Because the way we are going, if this Electoral Act is not signed, and things go wrong, and we can trace it to the fact that it's because the things that we've envisaged, 
and we said we should, we should pass them into law and it was refused and we now discover that that is the same thing that occurs or happens then your peace document you can't stop people so what i'm saying is that there are things that promote peace which are equality justice fairness you tell me how you go about that uh, but let's take this comment from uh, uh, one of our followers he says in a same society people act on law and not kangaroo peace agreement. I'm yes. sure that's yeah. That's that's that is what, what I'm saying. saying. <laughs> now, if for a venture you were you become the president and you need to change things, the way things are done, yes. uh, either the electoral act amendment or this peace committee, I, I know your choice already from what you've said so far. But you are not yet the president. What do you think should be the right things to be done before the election? We are a few days away, just less than about two Sign months. Sign the electoral the act the way it is. See, now, you, you see... With the errors, with the omissions... What errors that cannot be corrected? Let me let, see what the... the now, mission. even the, this last you. draft, we understand that the, the a committee of the legislation, um, INEC, and the executive actually sat to review this the document. document. So that means somebody was smart to... Maybe remove something, remove the word counting from the phrase in order to create this kind of situation that we have. So you're suspecting INEC and the executive, you know, playing a role I'm in not, this? I'm not suspecting. But you're suspecting someone? Yes. <laughs> now let me read to you the differences or the issues in the Electoral Act. Why uh, there seems to be a fourth on back, according to the Nation uh, newspaper is on the front page of the Nation. Now for 2010, the Electoral Act as amended. Uh, no card reader was in the or is in the 2010 uh, as amended electoral act. But in 2018, what they're proposing is the electronic, oh, sorry, is a card reader. Uh, that is still debatable. For 2010, what is in the electoral act that today is manual transmission of results. But what they want in 2018 Electron. is electronic transmission of results. Uh, for 2010, again, as amended, a deadline for submission of candidates list is 60 days before election, while in 2018 what, what is being proposed is submission of lists not earlier than 120 days before primary and not more than 90 days to election. Now, INEC for 2010 is responsible for the sequence of elections, which we've seen over the years. Uh, but in 2018, the National Assembly uh, wants to be responsible for the election sequence, and that could pose a problem to Mr. President. Now, for... 2010, there's a vague limit to campaign expenses. Uh, but for 2018, INEC sets limits for campaign expenses like we have seen. Uh, no cross-referencing er referencing error in 2010, and some cross-referencing errors in 2018. Uh, no complaint about time frame and complaint about time frame. And there, there are quite you know, some differences when you compare both 2010 and 2018. As Mr. President, perhaps he has seen this, you know, seen, seen the differences between Since the 2010 January to date, and 2018. Since January to date, we've been going over... Forth and back on Forth this. and back on about seven or uh, ten issues. And if truly we believe that what will offer Nigerians a credible election is this document, then why should we allow these errors to supersede the interest of the nation. Is this in the interest of the nation, really? Yeah. The, for the, him to sign this electoral act? Because if we're going by the constitution, then uh, it's pretty too late. It's pretty 11, uh, the 11th hour that the National Assembly is once again for the fourth time submitting this, you know, uh, act to the president and he has, received, uh, he has refused to uh, append his signature on it. Yeah, that's why I'm saying that his refusal actually is showing that, well, we may not have that peace or we may not have the credible elections. And if we don't have credible elections, is it a recipe for, 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 violence. for, for violence? But, but let's look at, uh, let's look at uh, some germane things you've said because mm -hmm. I'm taking time to listen to you very well. Now, looking at what the APC caucus said at the House of Assembly, at the House of Representatives yesterday, there seems to be still hope that what the 
committee or the national assembly should just do is to remove this error and return it to president for signature. Now, do you s see this happening? And if it is happening, looking at the provisor you just quoted, that as long as the majority of the party, and I can say it, yeah. that the majority of the party want this document yes. signed. So, do you see prospects? That is what should be done. That because is what should be even done. Even when the president has mentioned that there is probably, or some his party members have and the statement suspected that, some sinister that, move. Yeah, the, the, the statement that uh, uh, the amendment should be done and should take effect from 2019. Th those kind of statements. So this is what I'm talking about. You mentioned the issue of 2019 based on the ECOWAS convention, the which, I, that, which, 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 which should be six months. And so basically, provided that what? No, because you said 2019, mm -hmm. post-2019 election, yes. that's why I'm taking time to mm -hmm. remind you mm -hmm. that that was the essence of saying that. Mm -hmm. It's not because it's afraid. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't so, want to speak for the president see, we now. want we want peace. But for us to get peace, the election should be free, transparent, credible. Then you have peace. That is the process. I, I read your statement <coughs> recently. I, I don't know why you have issues with uh, the debate that is coming up. Because if you're talking about the law, the issue of debate is not even in the law. Mm. And if the committee or the bond and the uh, electoral debate uh, group came up with five parties and five candidates based on their criteria, which you're also probably you're privy to, why do you have issues with that? I know you will not be happy that you are not included, but can you explain why you have issues with that? Uh... The first question is that, did you see the guideline? The second question is that, did you see the criteria for selecting five people? So what we've seen is undue prominence given to a selected few. Now, the Nigerian situation or project is too precious or to be left in the hands of few. So my position and the position of my party is that is either you make that debate open for all, ask people who wants to be part of the debate to either write to say we want to be part of the debate and those that don't want to be part of it, they will not in any case write. Then let all of us go and debate the issues. Not that you just give a few selected people, you just project them as if they are the only candidates. We didn't just come into politics because we want to be. We want to solve the problem of these nations. And we believe we have the solutions. But don't you and think as most, well? of my, most of my colleagues that have been excluded too, are towing this path. And the truth is that if the Nigerian uh, Electoral Debate Group did not reverse this situation, then there shouldn't be any debate at all. But don't you, your party, let's just focus on your party, not other parties that were not included in the debate. Do you think that your party ideologies are not uh, the same or very similar to some of these other parties that were invited. How? Why can't you form a coalition with these parties? That's, for example, if that is what is going to solve. Because how do you imagine that this debate, you know, it covers over the 90 political parties that are registered? Or well, 77 of them. No. Okay, 77 that will participate in the presidential 76. candidate. 76. And let me, let me give you the analysis. Let me give you the analysis. As of today, 45 parties or so have formed alliance with... Um, There's a coalition of United Political Party. Yes. PDP. So what you but, have there is but that... But some of the candidates disagree. Hold on. I, I understand the, what is going on. So you have 46. Out of that 46, only one is representing them. Now you have the remaining 30. Out of those, the 30, alliances, there is stop, still, still going. And at the end, you only have about 8 of us or 10 of us who are standing alone and wants to run this race. Why not? And that's what I'm saying. The election debate group is not aware of the alliances. It's not known to us. We still have 36, they are part according of to this. your calculation. They are part, and because I will remind you that's that uh, uh, Dr. Shino, the COA candidate, 
as much as COA is part of the CUPP, mm. the alliance, he said he's still in the race. So how do you ex uh, exclude such a person? Yeah, that's why I said, ask the candidates, because it's not all of us, all the... That are the, interested are in inter the interested. So ask the candidates. If you are interested, write. And we'll write. Then if, if the, the podium... Or the, then let's have batches. And the most important thing is, all of us must discuss the projects or the issues that have bedeviled this nation. You always mention developed nations. We watch what happens in United States presidential election debates. We always see two, and they are not just two candidates. So they are not, the not just two parties. So it's not just. I, I believe the committee looked at this criteria before arriving at five. In if you were to be in the committee, in, in are the, you not going to have the same dilemma? No. And that's why I've, I've just provided the solution. Ask the candidates to write or signify their interest, whether they want to be in the debate or not. And you will get the true candidates that wants to be part of that debate. So, that's, so that, okay, that's without that being done, the uh, the vice president uh, debate will not hold tomorrow, and the proposed one in uh, 2019 will not also hold. Why do you say that? Because we are going to sue them. Because we have, that is an infringement in our own right. You cannot project a few political parties or candidates and say these are the people that should debate the issues. We are not, we are not subsidiaries to those, to those uh, parties. But if you and are, if the, the, the law that, that registers a party says we have equal rights. And if you listen to me, I've been talking about equality, which is one of our cardinal virtues. In Nigeria today, we don't have that virtue. We promote inequality, and that's why we've been trapped in all these challenges we have. So let's promote equal civil rights, equal uh, economic rights and equal political rights in this country. That is the only thing that will pro take us out of this quagmire and that we find ourselves. So if you're handed over uh, an invitation to attend the debate next year, would you still attend? or do you think Definitely. That's election? what I'm saying. Without that, the debate will not hold. So are you saying that every other party that is not or wasn't mm -hmm. invited you well, yes, to yes, th that, that is our position. Okay. Some, some have written already, and we are going to write. I have not reviewed what has been written, but that later we go to INEC, uh, uh, Bonn, and uh, the Election debate group. Debate group. All right. okay. We know that the, the broadcasting organization of Nigeria is actually uh, watching, so I'm sure that uh, uh, for all aggrieved political parties like yours, uh, I'm sure you get a letter from them sooner than uh, maybe you expect. That is the only thing that should be done. All right. Thank you so much, Dr. Chris David. Uh, Dr. Chris David me. is a presidential candidate of Liberation Movement. I will wish you well in your party, uh, but we'll take a break at this point. And when we come back, we have more discussions. Please stay with us. <laughs>